What is going on guys? Welcome back for another Moto Vlog. Hope everyone had a good week last week with it being the fourth and everything. I know I did. We got an S2000 ahead of us here. Ooh. That thing's pretty sick. You running a turbo? What size? Nice, man. How much power are you making? Dang. Nice, dude. See ya. Guy said he was running a, a 5863 turbo, making 12 pounds of boost for the street at like 450 wheels, so. I think it's probably pretty quick. I wouldn't mind picking one of those up. Or that, or like a Miata. Something like small and rear wheel drive. Just slap a turbo on it. I think that'd be pretty fun. So I think I got a pretty good topic for you guys today. I'm gonna be talking about horsepower versus torque. I'm gonna try and explain the difference between what is horsepower um, versus what is torque. Horsepower and torque are definitely related, even mathematically. Um, a horsepower is made up of torque. Torque goes into the, uh, the measurement of horsepower, believe it or not. And I'm just going to try to address what the difference um, of having a certain amount of horsepower versus a certain amount of torque would be. So first off, what I'm going to try to do is put horsepower and torque in layman's terms. A horsepower is a measurement of power, kind of like a watt. A watt is a different measurement of power too. And what a horsepower is, is basically a measurement of work um, per time. And work is defined as um, basically providing a force to an object and moving it. So let's say if I went up and pushed against that fence as hard as I could and it didn't move, that means zero work was done. But let's say I pushed up against that um, hay bale over there as hard as I could and I started rolling it. Work would be done in that scenario. Now torque on the other hand is a measurement of force length. And what I mean by force length is it's measured in foot pounds. That's foot times pounds. And usually when you're talking about torque, you're talking about something rotating around an axis. So let's say, for example, we have a ruler um, attached at one end to a, a, a rod and we apply one pound of force to the end of that ruler. That's going to be one foot times one pound. So that's one foot pound. Now let's say, on the other hand, we had a yardstick attached to um, a rod on one end and we applied a force of 10 pounds to the end of our yardstick. That would be 10 pounds times 3 feet because there's 3 feet in a yard. So that would be 30 foot-pounds of torque. And that's applied around our axis. And so now that we have horsepower defined and kind of torque defined in its own way, um, let's talk about how they're related. So back in the 1800s, um, believe it or not, there was a guy who basically defined what a horsepower was. And literally it's a unit of measure of a large horse performing so much torque per time. So let's say that again. It's uh, What a horsepower is, is performing so much torque per time. Oh, here we go, here's a vet. A victim is the license plate. You're gonna be a victim of this bike. Oh, try to get away from him. <laughs> yeah. So next let's define what horsepower is mathematically related to torque. And so furthermore, a horsepower is, don't ask me where these where they got these numbers from, but it's 33,000 foot-pounds of torque performed in one minute. Don't ask me where they got the 33,000 from. I believe that's the amount of torque a large horse provides in one minute. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyways, that's, that's what um, a horsepower is. It's 33,000 foot-pounds of torque per minute. And so now we can kind of define what one horsepower equals mathematically related to torque. So the formula boils down to horsepower equals your torque times your RPM of the engine over 5,252. 
And you guys are probably wondering where the heck that 5,252 number came from. Well, that's just kind of how the algebra plays out. Um, it, it has to do with geometry of, you know, 2 pi r is um, the circumference of your shaft um, that you're rotating around, and then you have the 33,000 number, and that the geometry just works out to that 5,252 number. So what we just learned is that horsepower is directly related to the torque that your engine is producing. And obviously the torque that your motorcycle provides is um, done through your pistons moving up and down with the rods connected to your crankshaft. So that's kind of a neat way of thinking about that. Ooh, po po. So I hope I did a good job of explaining kind of what the difference between torque is and what it is um, versus what horsepower is and how they're related to um, an engine. And so if you guys were wondering about how a dyno works, that actually measures the torque that your wheels produce um, against your engine RPM to calculate horsepower. Just plug the engine RPM um, that they have, you know, available to them while it's on the dyno, plus the torque provided by, you know, your wheel equals your horsepower. You just plug them into the equation, work out the horsepower. So that's how that all works. Something else also worth noting is that um, on a dyno graph, which has RPM on the bottom, and you know, your power, whatever, on the uh, vertical axis, that was cool. Um, the, the, the horsepower and torque curve will always cross at 5,252 RPMs. And that's just because if you look at the equation, and let's say you're trying to figure out horsepower, um, you know you're making 10 foot-pounds of torque times your 5,252 RPMs over the 5,252 number, you're going to get 10 horsepower out of it. So that's something kind of cool to, to, to realize about when you're looking at um, a, a dyno graph. So when it comes to engines and motorcycles, um, one of the reasons why I bought the Triumph Daytona is because it has a level torque curve throughout the whole rev range, which means it has um, a, a good horsepower curve. If you look at any of the inline fours, um, inline four 600cc bikes, usually you will notice that the torque curve of the engine spikes around like 8, 9, 10k RPMs, which, um, you know, it, it's fine. But having an even torque curve like the Triumph has makes the power super manageable um, and the bike won't scare you. The, the, the power doesn't skyrocket when that torque curve goes up. It just stays nice and level and that power just gradually increases with the RPM. And so you guys might be wondering how to, you know, increase torque because, you know, if you increase torque, you increase horsepower. And for the main part, that's, that's absolutely true with respect to your RPMs. But really the only way to increase torque from an engine is, I don't know if you guys have heard the saying, there's no replacement for displacement. Meaning the only way to really increase torque a lot um, from an engine is um, get a bigger engine. And that's why a lot of the, uh, the big muscle cars, you know, from the 60s or even nowadays, the bigger the engine, the more torque, the more horsepower. That's just how it all works out. It all comes down to um, the torque numbers your engine puts out. If you can make a lot of torque with uh, relatively decently high RPMs, your horsepower is gonna be insane. Another example of this horsepower and torque relationship is Formula One cars. Formula One cars, you know, they're running at 18, sometimes even 20,000 RPMs. Um, and they have a sweet spot for that torque to be at so they can get the most horsepower out of their engine. So they're constantly running at 18,000 RPMs. You know, you have that 18,000 number on the top of your fraction, then you have your torque number, um, your optimal torque number, and then you have that all over that 5,252 number, and that'll get you the most horsepower out of your engine. So a final takeaway from this video, and kind of a statement that you can remember um, the difference between torque and horsepower, is this. Horsepower sells a vehicle, and torque is what moves it. And that's not my quote at all. Somebody much smarter than me uh, came up with that one. But uh, I like it. I've, I've heard it, and I think it's super true and super useful. So guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. We got a nice kind of sunset off in the distance there. 
perfect time to end the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Don't forget to hit that like button below and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.